So in this video, I want to talk about the treatment of Parkinson disease. Parkinson disease is a movement disorder and is characterized by the loss of dopaminergic neurons in the substantial nigra. So normally, this nigra striatal pathway is very important for the execution of voluntary movements. So you can imagine that if you're losing all these neurons there, there's all kinds of movement problems. One cardinal feature that you see in this patient is a resting tremor that worsens under stress and is absent with purposeful movements or when you are asleep. Then you have all kinds of hypokinetic features like bradykinesia, kinesia movements, bradi means slow, or akinesia, so the inability to move or the slow movements. These patients are also very rigid and they have problems with postural instability. So all kinds of balance issues. So how do we treat Parkinson disease? Well, if you remember, for the execution of voluntary movements in the substantial nigra, it's very important to have a balance between dopamine and acetylcholine. So in Parkinson's disease, you lose all these dopaminergic neurons. So therefore, in contrast to dopamine, acetylcholine concentrations are very high. So there's now two options to treat a Parkinson patient. Number one option is you kind of increase dopamine concentrations. And this you could do either by just replacing dopamine to give dopamine agonists or to make sure that dopamine is not as efficiently broken down, so you inhibit dopamine breakdown. The other option is just to use anti-mascarinics, anticholinergics, to at least make sure that the acetylcholine is not as high in contrast to dopamine and to restore this balance. So let's first start talking about the ways of dopamine replacement. How can you replace dopamine? So here I have drawn the blood-brain barrier. And so here is the brain, and this is down there, the periphery. And so here is a substantia nigra where neurons are projected to the striatum. So that's my dopaminergic neuron in the nigra striatal pathway. And so there's dopamine release, and then it can work on the dopamine receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. So now the first idea would be if I want to replace dopamine, I just give dopamine. However, the problem is if I would give dopamine, it could not pass the blood-brain barrier because there's no transporter that would get us the dopamine from the periphery into the brain. And we need dopamine in the brain because we lost these dopaminergic neurons in the nigra striatal pathway, so right here. So if I would give a patient just dopamine, it would not get into the brain, it would just stay in the periphery. And what would it do in the periphery? Well, there are dopamine receptors on the heart, so you would get kinds of arrhythmias. There's also dopamine receptors in the chemoreceptor trigger zone, and we know if we stimulate them, that leads to nausea and vomiting. And as you probably know, the chemoreceptor trigger zone is very poorly protected by the um, blood brain barrier, so we're going to have some activation there and just going to induce nausea and vomiting. There's also dopamine receptor on the peripheral vasculature, so th these are GI coupled receptors, so you're going to get vasodilation and that could lead to orthostatic hypotension. So if you would give a patient dopamine, it would not get into the brain and you're going to get all kinds of peripheral dopaminergic side effects. So as just giving this patient's dopamine is not an option because it's just going to give this side effect, we give them a precursor. And this precursor is called levodopa. And the nice thing is that there is a neutral amino acid pump that can take this precursor, get it into the brain. In the brain, it's going to be taken up by the nerve terminals. It's going to be converted to dopamine. It's going to get into vesicles and then can be released as dopamine and can act on the specific dopamine receptors. So that's a way to restore dopamine by giving a dopamine precursor that can be taken up into the brain. However, there's still the problem that some of this levodopa is going to be converted in the periphery to dopamine and then can also cause all these effects. And these are, in fact, all the side effects that you normally see because there's some levodopa always going to be converted to dopamine. So people have come up with a pretty clever idea. They're going to give a peripheral amino 
acid decarboxylase inhibitor, which is called carbidopa. So this inhibitor only works on this enzyme in the periphery and not on the enzyme in the brain because this uh, drug is not going to pass the blood-brain barrier. So therefore, you're going to have a specific inhibition of the breakdown of levodopa in the periphery, but not in the brain. And therefore, you're going to get the dopamine in the brain where you want to have it and so that you can restore the dopamine levels in the nigrostradal pathway. This combination of drugs, the levodopa plus carbidopa, is now a mainstay in Parkinson therapy, and this combination preparation is also called cinemet, which makes sense because cinemet means sine emesis, Latin sine without emesis, nausea vomiting, so that means without nausea vomiting because by giving this combination, you prevent the breakdown of levodopa to dopamine in the periphery and therefore prevent the side effects and particularly the nausea vomiting, which is a very bothersome side effect. So what other options do we have to increase dopamine levels or to increase dopaminergic signaling? Well, one very simple way is just to give a dopamine agonist, like ropinirol or pramipaxol, which just would directly stimulate dopamine receptors in the brain. So the third option to increase dopamine levels would be to prevent the breakdown of dopamine. And there are kind of two classes of drugs. The one are the MAOB inhibitors, monoamine oxidase B inhibitors, which are breaking down dopamine in the central nervous system to dopac. And so this is selegiline and rasagiline. And those drugs can be used to increase the dopamine levels in the brain. Most of the time, they're used as an adjunct to other therapies. And the last option to prevent the break time is to use COMT inhibitors, COMT inhibitors, and this is tolcapone and entacapone, the capones. And these drugs work mainly in the periphery. And so what is going to happen in here is that levodopa is also going to be broken down by COMT. And so you're going to just increase the levels of levodopa so that there's more levodopa going to get into the brain. So you can already predict that these drugs, tolcapone and entacapone, are only used in combination with levodopa and carbidopa, just to prolong the action of levodopa and just to prevent the fast breakdown of levodopa in the periphery. So I just want to finish up with some perspectives on how to treat the Parkinson patient. So generally, when you have a pretty mild Parkinson disease in a young patient and the tremor is predominant, the anticholinergic drugs are a very good option, trihexyphenidyl and penstropin, for example. But again, for the anticholinergic drugs, they work mainly if you have a Parkinson patient with tremor. And the Parkinson patient should be also young because generally we don't want to give anticholinergic medications to the elderly patient because they cause confusion, sedation, dizziness, nothing that you want to have in elderly patient. There's also the option of giving MAOB inhibitors, particularly if the Parkinson is pretty mild, or another drug that I have not yet mentioned is amantadine, which is not pretty clear how it works. So here are some options just for a mild Parkinson disease treatment. If the Parkinson disease gets more severe, we kind of distinguish, are we dealing now with a patient above the age of 65 or below of 65? If you're dealing with a patient above the age of 65, you would probably straight go to levodopa, carbidopa. And then you can still add a COMT inhibitor or, in addition, an MAOB inhibitor. If it's a slightly younger patient under the age of 65, you would first try a dopamine agonist and then add later levodopa, carbidopa, and then you can still add on all these inhibitors of levodopa or dopamine breakdown, like the COMT inhibitors or the MAOB inhibitors. This concludes the video on the treatment of Parkinson's disease.